Hi everyone, welcome to our first video in our series on the 10 most commonly missed concepts on the MCAT. Today we are going to be covering Michaelis Menten Kinetics. The contents of this video, as well as the rest of the nine most commonly missed concepts and their details can be found at mcatselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. My name is Ellery Schlingman, one of the tutors at MCAT Self Prep, and I'll be walking you through today's topic. Let's get started. So first we wanna think about what is the purpose of michaelis menten Kinetics? Why do we need to know it? And what is it telling us? And essentially michaelis menten Kinetics is a way of characterizing how quickly an enzyme can convert its substrate into its product or products. The substrate of course being the molecule that binds the enzyme's active site and the product or products being what is generated once the reaction takes place. Now, pre-med students and those studying for the MCAT often have a really difficult time with michaelis menten Kinetics, the main reason being that professors and MCAT prep books often go over the entire derivation of the michaelis menten equation, which leaves us all feeling a little bit like this guy. Instead, we are just going to focus on not these equations, but the high yield concepts that'll help you maximize your score on your MCAT and specifically on your michaelis menten Kinetics questions. To get started, we wanna understand what is being shown to us in the michaelis menten graph, which you may see throughout your MCAT prep and potentially even on exam day. To start off, we're gonna look at our two axes, the x-axis, which is showing us substrate concentration, and the y-axis, which shows us the initial velocity of the reaction. Two other important parameters to think about and know are Vmax, which tells us how fast the reaction can go at its maximum. So this is when enzymes are what we call saturated, or essentially no other substrate can bind to the enzyme because it is binding and reacting as quickly as it can. The second parameter that we need to keep our eye on is Km, which is the substrate concentration added in order to reach half of Vmax. Now it's really important to note that Km is not a rate, it is a concentration of substrate, all right? Next thing we're gonna talk about is stay in this KM area, but relate KM to affinity, right? And how well a ligand might bind an enzyme. To demonstrate this, we're gonna look at our graph that we here ha have over here on the right and define our Vmax as the 100% binding. That would mean that half of our Vmax, right, would be at 50% binding. So we'll put that up here too. What you can see is that our high affinity ligand actually has a low Km. It takes less substrate to reach half of Vmax compared to the low affinity ligand in green, which has a high Km. So we can see through this relationship that Km and affinity are actually inversely related to one another. Another important factor to understand in terms of michaelis menten Kinetics is Kcat. And I'm not talking about that Kcat. I'm instead talking about the speed of a single enzyme. And Kcat can be found by um, dividing our Vmax by our enzyme concentration. It's essentially how many substrates one enzyme can convert into product in a given amount of time. So that is why we call it a speed. The last bit of math that we're gonna throw at you is thinking about catalytic efficiency. And we can find catalytic efficiency or how efficient an enzyme is reacting by dividing our Kcat by our Km. And this allows both speed of the enzyme and affinity of the ligand to be taken into account here. So now that we've covered all of those different concepts, we can put it all together in our michaelis menten equation, which reads that the initial velocity is equal to Vmax times the substrate concentration, all divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. Now, because we didn't derive this equation, if you want to go back and look at your MCAT prep books or at our Khan Academy linked um, videos, 
go for it. But for the purposes of the MCAT, you just need to memorize the equation. It's one of many things you'll need to memorize. So just add it to your flashcards. In addition to the michaelis smitten equation, we have a very closely related concept of line weaver burke plots, which again may show up in your MCAT prep and possibly on exam day. And they are essentially a linearization of those michaelis smitten curves that we saw earlier in the video. Here though, we have a couple different parameters to define. Our x-intercept is gonna be negative one over km, which means that as the x-intercept increases in the negative direction, so going that way, we are gonna have a decrease in km. The y-intercept is one over vmax, which means that as the y-intercept increases in the positive direction going up, we have a decrease in vmax. Using these two parameters together, we can find the slope which is km over vmax, and that essentially means that as the slope decreases, efficiency increases. And we can make that assumption because we see here km is on the top of our division, while when we were talking about catalytic efficiency, that km was on the bottom. So that creates that inverse relationship between the two. In addition to line weaver burke plots, we have one last big topic to cover. I'm gonna throw a lot at you, so bear with me, but it is one of the most tested concepts within michaelis menten kinetics, and that is enzyme inhibition. We have four different types of enzyme inhibitors that we're gonna discuss and that you'll need to know for the MCAT, and those are competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition, and mixed inhibition. So I'm gonna show you graphs kind of detailing three of these, and then we'll talk about the last one in just a moment. On our far left, we have a graph depicting competitive inhibition. And we can see on this graph, the no competitor um, environment is in blue, while the red indicates that inhibitor has been added. And we see here that the slope has changed, which is bringing that y, uh, excuse me, that x-intercept in towards our point of origin. This means that when we have competitive inhibition, we will see an increase in Km. However, Vmax will be unaffected because our y-intercept has not changed. In competitive inhibition, you see that the enzyme is binding directly to the active site and is competing with the substrate for the enzyme. That is why we call it competitive inhibition. Our next one over in the middle is uncompetitive inhibition, and that is when our inhibitor binds to what we call the ES complex. So it only binds after our substrate has bound the enzyme. Here, instead of seeing a change in slope, we see a change in the y-intercept. And in this case, we have a reduction in both Km and Vmax. On our far right, we have non-competitive inhibition. And that is when we have the inhibitor binding to either the enzyme alone or the ES complex in an equal fashion. Another thing to note about non-competitive inhibition is that this is binding at an allosteric site. So right, not in the active site, but instead at another site that may change the uh, configuration of the active site and still prevent binding. Either way, for non-competitive inhibition, we see that Km is unaffected because both the slope and the y-intercept are changing. However, K, uh, excuse me, Vmax is again reduced. Last but not least, because you may be asking yourself, what about mixed inhibition? This is when we have the inhibitor binding to the E, the enzyme complex, or the ES complex in an unequal fashion. So we cannot predict how everything is gonna shake out. We do know that Vmax will decrease. However, we cannot tell if Km will increase or decrease because it depends on the binding. If the inhibitor binds to the enzyme, we are gonna have an increase in Km, but if it binds to the ES complex, we are, will likely see a reduction or a decrease in Km. 
Brenna talk, just a quick summary of what we covered today. It was a lot, so thank you for bearing with me. We covered the michaelis menten graph, as well as all of the parameters you need to know associated with it. We covered KM and affinity and their inverse relationship, as well as KCAT and efficiency. We finished up talking about the michaelis menten equation, make sure to memorize that one, as well as the line weaver berg plots and our four different types of inhibition. I just wanted to thank you all for watching um, and stay tuned for more videos in our 10 Most Commonly Missed Concepts video series. Also, be sure to check out the course at mcatselfprep.com. Also, if you're interested in improving your MCAT score and feel like you need some more direct assistance, we of course have tutors like myself available at mcatselfprep.com, so be sure to check us out there as well. I'm so glad I was able to spend this time with you today and I'll see you in the next one.